today we are going to be announcing some amazing artistic contributions that many Coloradans will be able to enjoy on your license plate. Uh, unlike many of the other specialty license plates, these license plates will be no additional charge. Um, so that every Coloradan, for the same cost as any license plate, can be part of celebrating our sesquicentennial, our 150th anniversary uh, as a state in 2026. Uh, these license plates will be available to every Coloradan for a limited time only, starting uh, this uh, August through until mid-27. Uh, and then, of course, people will be able to keep them, but there will be no new ones available. So they are a special uh, uh, event, special license plate for our sesquicentennial. Um, uh, I don't, of course, remember 1976. I was only one year old. But I do remember, of course, in the 80s and 90s, seen many of the quarters that were made. You might remember the drummer boy uh, quarters that every now and then you might still find in circulation, but certainly in the 80s and 90s uh, were widely in circulation. So too, uh, these license plates will, will be enjoyed uh, for many years, but only available and made and manufactured by the state for a very limited time. Uh, we, of course, wanted to tap into the, the talent, the artistic skills, the patriotism, of uh, Coloradans from across the state to participate in this design contest. Over 30,000 people voted. Uh, I was one of them, um, and I hope that many of you were as well, to determine which license plates would celebrate our 150th anniversary. I would also point out that our 150th birthday coincides with our nation's semi-quincentennial, our 250th birthday as a nation is the same year. So it's a great time to reflect on not only who we are as Coloradans, but also who we are as Americans. In my State of the State address in January, I asked the question, who do we want to be when Colorado turns 150 years old? And I shared my vision for what I believe we can do if we work together. The designs being revealed today, today share uh, that vision for our state. They're a visual representation of who we are uh, and who we can be and who we want to be. I'm so proud to be joined by the Department of Revenue Director, Mark Ferrandino, many members of the Department of Revenue team who helped run this contest, and of course, our two contest winners. Evan Greisheimer, who's with us today. Evan, congratulations. We also had a special youth category, and Kalista Blaschke is the winner of the youth category, age 11, age 11. Um, and that was available for people under 13. <clears throat> Both of these license plates that you're about to see uh, will be in production and available. And again, a key point is no extra charge, unlike many of the uh, novelty or uh, cause related plates that people can get. We wanna make sure that everybody can participate in celebrating 150 years of Colorado. Uh, Evan designed the winning plate for the 13 and older group. Kalista designed the winning plate for the 13 and under group. They're both available August 1st through uh, this year through August 1st of 2027. Uh, both of our winning artists have incredible talent. I know they put a lot of thoughtful hard work into coming up with these license plates and I think they will be very proud for many years as they're driving around our beautiful state and they see their own work reflected uh, on the rear end of other cars uh, as they navigate <laughs> through our roads. So don't miss out. Make sure you can get one when they become available. Uh, we're very excited uh, to, uh, to be celebrating. This is only the beginning. This is really the first of, of many things that will occur for Colorado's 150th. As you know, we, we set up a sesquicentennial commission. Uh, there's some additional work that we're working on with the legislature around preparing for Colorado's 150th. But this is the first sort of substantive announcement, a piece that's available uh, well ahead of the actual uh, sesquicentennial because we want these license plates to actually be out there on cars for when 2026 hits. Uh, so with that, I want to turn it over briefly before we turn it over to our winners, uh, to our Department of Revenue director, uh, who's also no stranger to this building. Some of you remember his time here, Mark Ferrandino. Thank you, Governor Polis. Um, and first, let me uh, add my congratulations to Evan and Calista for your amazing work. Um, I also want to thank the Department, uh, the Division of Motor Vehicles. We have with us Electra Bussell, who's the Director of the Division of Motor Vehicles, 
and the team for doing amazing work. Um, just a little while ago, we did a similar process with our um, driver's license and we've had huge success. People who love what our driver's license all around, anywhere I go and I show it, they're like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. And you know, this is the same example. We have such talent in Colorado um, and such beauty in Colorado to allow people to take their talent and make that into something everyone sees every day, whether it's your driver's license or your license plates while you're driving. And I will say, as some people know, I have not, uh, I'm familiar with specialty license plates and tend not to like them when I was in the legislature. This is not, a, I would say this is not a specialty license plate. This is license plate celebrating our 150th birthday. And I'm gonna be really excited to get one of these two plates on my car when they become available. Um, so thank you, Governor, and turn it back to you. Thank you. So we are going to be revealing both of these, and I would add that these are, of course, uh, the mock-ups, The um, and I will be presenting uh, the winners with uh, versions of the license plate. The official versions, of course, will be produced in August. And so uh, we will reveal them here. Tell me, Connor. First, will be this one. This is our youth winner. And our version of winner. Wonderful. So uh, Kalista and Evan, I want to congratulate you on your, your talent, on uh, seizing the initiative and uh, entering the uh, competition and of course with 30,000 uh, voters across our state. We know that many more people will want to enjoy these uh, plates on their cars. And I'll turn it over to Kalista. Um, it feels amazing to win. And I think it'll be very cool with all my, with my work on all the cars of Colorado. And this is my first time entering a contest. So I'm just very surprised I won. <laughs> <laughs> So Kalista, I'm going to give you a uh, actual version. Again, these are just mock-ups. It's not the actual plate, but um, this is uh, for your wall, and uh, you know, in your your room um, at home, and when you go to college, take that with you. That on your <laughs> room. Congratulations. The uh, adult uh, category winner, um, we have uh, Evan Greisheimer, who did an amazing job. Uh, he said he spent at least a full day working on it, and that'll uh, pay off now for many years to come. Thank you, Evan, for helping to celebrate Colorado's uh, 150th birthday. And thank you. Um, it's just amazing to have some work that'll be out there kind of throughout the state. Uh, graduated back in 21 from Colorado State University. So I've been doing a lot of kind of freelance stuff on the side, but having something that's local and major out there is pretty awesome. Anything that, like, you want to talk about any of the design elements or what inspired you? Yeah, so for my plate, I really looked at the Colorado State flag. I thought it, it does a really good job of representing the state with the colors of the sky, the red rocks, the sun. Uh, the badge in the middle I took from the uh, state seal because I thought it did a really good job for representing the mining and the, you know, the history of the state during its earlier stages. Thank you. So again, starting August, all Coloradans will be able to purchase both commemorative. What's that? Oh, yes, you get a, you get a plate. Now, you, already, you already graduated CSU, so too late for your dorm room walls. So take this to your, wherever you live, and you can proudly display that, so. Uh, Congratulations, Evan and Kalista. Thank you for joining us. You will uh, be forever a part of Colorado's 150th birthday, and you will get to see your work for many years to come uh, as patriotic Coloradans display our pride uh, in our nation's and our state's history. So congratulations, and with that, we're happy to open it up for questions. Kalista, where do you go to school? I go to school at Grant Beacon Middle School. Uh, can you repeat that? I go to school at Grant Beacon Middle School. Grant Beacon. Would you like to say anything about what inspired you for, for, for your, your piece or kind of your design elements? Sure. Um, it's Pike Peak because I read an article that people kind of went up Pike's Peak to find gold. And I just thought that was a cool part of Colorado's history. And uh, I also included the state tree and state bird. And have you been to the top of Pike's Peak? No. <laughs> and I suggest taking the train up instead of driving. It's a very scary drive. But the train yeah. is good, so. 
any additional questions. Governor, any updates on the course on the property taxes or local use or local control? Who are you having discussions with and would be interested to see some of the discussions? Yeah, those involve a lot of stakeholders. Uh, I think you're talking about two, di two different uh, bills, uh, some overlapping stakeholders perhaps. Um, but these are very um, thoughtful, you know, uh, important issues for the state. Uh, on, on one hand, uh, I, I, uh, it's, it's, it's absolutely critical that we provide uh, property tax relief uh, given that uh, the residential assessment rate went up 26% um, over two years. Again, people would like to see the increase in their home value if they're fortunate enough to be a homeowner, but no one should be priced out of where they live. Uh, and uh, of course, incomes have not gone up at that same level. Um, we also want to address uh, the one of the negative impacts of the Gallagher Amendment now repealed is uh, Colorado's higher commercial property tax rate. So we want to make sure our state can be more competitive for business. So certainly the work continues with um, a broad set of stakeholders with regards to property tax relief. Uh, so too with housing, um, a, a lot of important discussions are occurring. I, I know my office has met with over a hundred uh, different groups of stakeholders, um, uh, whether it was in Summit County two days ago or here at the governor's office. Uh, we continue to uh, hear from the very best ideas that people have uh, on how we can remove some of the artificial constraints on quantity of housing to help make sure that we can have more housing for every Colorado budget close to where jobs are. Governor, where um, the, the rent control bill cleared the House this week, is that in a form that is getting close to what would be acceptable to you, or are you still skeptical? Well, you know, we, we are, I'm, as you know, I'm, I'm deeply concerned by anything that could increase uh, the cost of housing, and uh, in areas that have um, uh, utilized this as a data-driven person, I've seen, you know, the, the fact that it, that, um, uh, it's associated with some of the uh, highest rent uh, areas of the country. I believe the rent is too darn high already, uh, and uh, we are focused on efforts at the state and local level to create more housing stock. Uh, and obviously I'd be very wary of anything that would uh, reduce the new supply of housing uh, for rent or for purchase. Nick? Uh, Governor, yeah, there, sorry, it's not me. Um, there was uh, Power Act was reintroduced, uh, Fair Work Week's up for committee tomorrow, uh, pay equity, um, the Public Employee Protections Act was in committee yesterday. And A, I was just curious where you stand on some of those bills and what you make of kind of the tenor around business and labor relations. Well, I think you mentioned two or three bills there. I don't know, I, I don't think we've reviewed those yet and obviously we always want to see uh, what occurs uh, in the legislative process. Um, did you mention two or three bills there? Uh, I guess, what, what do you yeah. think of the just kind of general tenor around business and labor um, this legislative session? Uh, well, you know, I, I think that we want to be a, a state where uh, we're one of the best states to, to do business in, to start, to grow a business. We attract uh, new businesses and employers from across the country. And of course, we also want to be a state that uh, treats employees fairly, that doesn't um, allow for uh, discrimination and uh, allows everybody to uh, to contribute to the best of their talent and, and earn a great living. Elliot? Going back to the rent control bill, is there anything that could be changed in there that would make you less skeptical? Uh, well, again, I, I always will review kind of data. This is, uh, these kinds of policies um, in different iterations, there's a good sample set of, of where they've been applied and, and what has occurred. Um, my focus is greater quantity of housing um, because it's very simple law of economics 101. <clears throat> you know, price is a function of supply and demand. That's one of the bedrock principles of, of economics. Um, and uh, we, have, we have great demand for housing in Colorado. That's because it's a great place to live. Great quality of life, good schools, uh, two job openings for every unemployed person. Like anywhere, we have our issues and our challenges, and we're going to we're going to tackle them head on with um, uh, with our eyes wide open. But uh, the secret is out that Colorado is a great place to live, and that's driven up demand. There are many artificial constraints on supply, uh, and so <clears throat> that is what has forced prices up. Uh, and we need to make sure we can remove some of those barriers on supply of housing to create more housing for all 
family budget levels um, uh, for rental and for purchase. Obviously, the aspirational goal is for purchase, home ownership, wealth building for families, middle class families. But um, you know, there are some that need to rent until they can afford a down payment. But it also makes a big difference to have housing inventory that's available in the 200s and the 300s rather than just the six and the 700s. Because when you get to six and seven hundreds, it becomes unaccessible to own for many middle class families, for bedrock members of our communities, for teachers, for firefighters, for law enforcement, for people who work. Um, in, in our retail environment. Uh, we want to make sure that more Coloradans have the opportunity for their, um, for, to, to grow wealth through home ownership here in Colorado. Ben, just, yes, Governor, the uh, supervised injection facility, that bill was at this first hearing today. What do you see as some of the pros and cons of letting communities decide on that issue? Well, I'd be you know, deeply concerned with any approach that would contribute to more drug use and lawlessness. Uh, we have focused on the behavioral health response at the state level to substance abuse. And of course, uh, we, uh, through the uh, American Rescue Act funds last session, uh, appropriated a significant uh, historic investment in behavioral health. We're just beginning to see a lot of that in terms of creating the plans, concrete plans to create additional uh, residential treatment facilities, behavioral health beds, uh, addressing both substance abuse as well as the mental health precursors that are often associated uh, with substance abuse. So uh, we look forward to working with our cities uh, and other stakeholders to make sure the state comes to the table around how we can help people escape the cycle of drug abuse. That's all the time we have. Thank you everybody, good to see you. I hope you all are sporting these license plates uh, later this year. Thank you.